Navy Dental Nachos crew is Paul Dr. Nacho with a special episode of Spicy Toppings, things that are happening out there in the real world of dentisting, brought to you on the Nacho Network, a real TV channel inside of my heart. So today we have the awesome Dr. De ben Baranes, someone who's been a Nacho fan for years. And the title of this is How a Bad Dentist Found a Good Job and Why Adding Implants to Your Practice is So Important. But let's start with How a Bad Dentist found a good job. So Ben, I want to go back to your training in dental school in a minute, but share with us where you are right now, your dentisting life today, where you're working, what's happening, share that with the Nacho audience. Um, so right now I work two part-time jobs and two private practices. Uh, both jobs, their dentists are not really in the picture. One kind of hates dentistry, he's checked out. The other one lives two hours away, so I pretty much run their show for them. Uh, this, these are my jobs number four and five. So it took me kind of a difficult year yeah. to get to where I'm at today. And then that's what I wanted to help new grads with. So Ben, uh, mainly I do this show so people just tell me that I'm right. It's kind of also all for my own ego. So is finding a dental, dental job, is it a little bit like dating? You know, you have to figure out, you know, what's the right fit. So what happened? What were some of the things that were wrong? I always say, get out there, get your dentisting self out there, always be connecting. I want to hear about that. But mm -hmm. what were some of the things with your first jobs that were not the right fit? So my first job, I worked in a DSO office and, and there's a lot of pros and working in DSOs and a lot of cons. And, and one of the things that were not a good fit is I worked for guys that, that weren't dentists. They were just MBAs. They had no clue what the, the dental word mean. And they were kind of pushing for treatment that wasn't always, um, always ethical. So that was a big problem. Yeah. For me. I want to pause this because I know one day many people will listen to this, maybe millions, Ben, you have millions listening. So when you get out there into the real world of dentisting, you learn about things that they don't teach you in dental school. Awareness is important. So you were in an environment which was not, let's just say, very supportive for dentists doing the right type of care. Is that a fair way to say that? That's okay. correct. And how about the other two jobs? What were some of the fit issues with them? Um, the other job, so it's pretty much kind of managing the practice when you're, when you're a new guy, I'm 29 year old and the doctor's kind of checked out, kind of getting that leadership role and having people kind of listen to you when you yourself don't really know what you're doing. It's kind of a struggle. So. And, and it's also unfair to ask. So if I dropped you and your fi fiance to be, I know you're going to ask about your marriage in a second. If I dropped you off with the two moderators and said, watch them, me and Mrs. Nacho are gone. You don't know their favorite shows. You don't, I mean, if you take one of the moderators, Paw Patrol, so that is the end of the day. So if you don't know those hidden secrets about watching children, it doesn't mean how hard, you could try hard. You could be a good person. You need to have that support, that management support. And we both have the same favorite book, The E-Myth Revisited. Uh, it happened on me all the time. One of the things you liked about Dental Nachos as a dental student now is, is you enjoyed what I talked about systems. Tell me more about that. How, what kind of systems are you using in your dentisting life? So first off, thank you because you've inspired me on the way I run my practice. Oh. I've taken a lot of your ideas, a lot of your models, I've kind of copied them. I just think that when you're, when you're a bad dentist, you know, dentistry obviously already had a lot of things that are unpredictable, they're gonna happen to you. There's gonna be even more if you're a rookie. So trying to limit those things is very important. So morning huddles is a must. I have objectives for my teams in terms of production. I give them a little checklist for each procedure and what I expect to look on the tray take pictures of your trays, just kind of have a model where like any new assistant could come in and kind of pick up the paste and, and kind of run smoothly. I love that, Ben. What you've done so well, you know, my other book, The Checklist Manifesto that I love reading, you know, everything that matters needs a system and everything matters because when you have your act together, that's when you're prepared to go into the game of dentistry because stuff happens that you don't expect. Patients showing up late, crown falls on the floor, nobody finds it when it falls on the floor all kinds of things. And you've said you're a bad dentist. So people watching, that just means you're a baby age dentist, zero to two years out of school. It's a term of affection. I am now 18 years out of school. I'm a medium age dentist, circle of dentisting life. So systems keep you sane. Would you say that? So systems keep you sane and decrease stress. Now, if you could go back to your dental school self, what would you say you should, what should a D3 or D4 be working on to learn right now to survive in the real world, not clinical related. What would you say? Uh, not clinically. I would say talking to patients, like you say, using terms that they can comprehend and really, like you really want to see in their eyes that they're getting what you say. So like these videos, like just, just, just try to describe it to your young brother or your, yeah. your wife or whoever you with. And if they cannot understand what you're telling them, then you're not going to do a good job with patients. 
such an important point. I love you saying that everything that, I mean, explain it to people like they're a four-year-old. It's from Philadelphia, the movie with Denzel Washington. Everybody's stressed. People come into your office thinking of a million things. They're kids, this. So when they sit down, just because you talk about implants and root canals all the time, when you talk like a weird dentist to patients, they don't get it. When you talk like a person to these, when you talk, talk to them like a person, magic will happen. So these phrases, you can practice now, whether your school is shut down for COVID, not shut down, whether you're doing 20 crowns or two crowns, practicing your words is free. And that's something that all dentists should start doing the first day they get to dental school because anyone can learn this. What are some of your favorite nacho phrases you use in the heat of battle? Do you have any ones that you use with patients? Do you have any nacho phrase that you use with patients on a regular basis? I was say ones that I don't use. Uh, since I've heard you talk, I don't say virgin tooth yeah. anymore yeah. to, to all ladies. Yeah. I don't say that anymore. So I say it's a tooth that hasn't had any treatment done on. I like so, that. I mean, it's yeah. just why make it weirder than it is? You got a 75 year old woman. We can't do a bridge here, Millie. Your tooth, it's a virgin. Uh, what about the one with the filling in the back? It's very promiscuous. I mean, it's just so there weird. You go. Right? So I like to talk about best things, reality checks, and growing for the future. So, you know, I am here to be JBR2. Just be realistic. Just be nice, positive, but realistic. What's one of the best things about private practice that you would say to dental students, hey, this has been really great for me? Uh, it's been really great for me because I actually got real mentorship in a private practice, which I wasn't getting in a DSO. And I like that. Now, tell the Nacho audience, Ben, ABC, always be connected. How did you find these jobs that are making you happy as an associate right now? So I did find them through connections. One was an insurance agent that uh, got me through my disability insurance. So if you have somebody that's trying to sell you stuff, you might as well ask them for a favor in return. And so that's what I did. I also contacted a lot of lab reps, which also helped me a lot to find some jobs, but it wasn't a right fit for me. I would also talk to specialists, just anybody that's in the dental field that talks to a lot of dentists, kind of reach out to them. So, yeah, so there's no studies on this. Also, there's no studies. Can't take a bite wing of it. You got to be a real person. Another book that I don't mention enough here on Dental Nachos is The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Because in that, he talks about the four personality types and connectors. I'm a classic connector. So get to know me. Your insurance agent is a connector because he or she's talking to dentists. Your lab person is a dental connector. Connect with connectors and say, hey, I'm looking to buy, you know, we're going to talk mid. I'm looking to buy a practice in the next few years. That lab person might say, you know, Doc Smith told me he wants to sell his practice. I remember, Dr. this is the magic stuff that happens. Now, I love running dental nachos. and I love sharing. One of the things I say is things are taken out of context when you type them. If I say this, Ben, if a practice does a million dollars a year and has five operatories, it often will not even be shown to private practice dentists because DSOs love the first crack in. If I type that on dental nachos, people say, why are you being so negative? But if I say it as a broker and a dentist, I'm not being negative, I'm just being realistic. So oftentimes, when you're a dental student, I've been young, you think, those old dentists, they don't know what they're talking about. And those medium age dentists, they're just being negative. But give me a reality check, in private practice, what if has Mad said that really has been a challenge or a wake up call in private practice? What's one of the toughest parts? Um, one of the toughest part is one of the big limits you have as a dentist is kind of your demographics as well. I think that's that's something I didn't really picture. So it doesn't matter how good you sell cases. If you're if you're in a low income area, you're not going to do all on fours every day. And if you're in a high income area, you're just. Uh, you got to make that implant perfect. So it's kind of a trade off. I think what you said is really important. It reminds me of restaurants because my wife, Mrs. Nacho and I, if we go out to the restaurant two doors down, one of the best in the country called Vetri, we have three hours to eat dinner. But if we bring our children, we don't have three hours. So it's so important to match that as long as your treatment plan and your treatment is acceptable, acceptable, good, great, excellent. It's like Elvez, Chipotle, Taco Bell, and the practice models that is a wake-up call. And dental school exactly. often gives you a misrepresentation of what this feels like in the real world, because you might not have two hours to do a PPO composite. It doesn't mean you're going to do it bad. You just have to marry the real world business part with doing a good job for patients. And then also you had shared while we were talking, patient management. Can that be challenging at times, Ben? It can be very challenging at times. Yes. Managing expectations, especially. I feel like a lot of patients think that 
Uh, the work we do is for life. It's always going to be perfect. They're never going to have to come back for adjustment. So kind of warning them about post-op sensitivity, things like that. I didn't do at first. I was like, hey, see you next time, Mrs. Jones. And then they come back very pissed because their occlusion's off. I'm kind of managing expectations from the start, kind of lowering the... And I'm yeah. going to give you something. You just told me to think so. I'm going to give you something. Because I said this to a patient yesterday. It's a real life story from my office just yesterday. I had a patient in her late 40s. Came in, number five, broken off of the gum line. She was very upset. Not at the other dentist. She was kind of upset at herself. Like, I put a lot of time into my mouth. I try so hard. And I said, when did you have this done? No, she said, 1999. So I said, oh, that's 19 years, 1,000 meals a year. You got 19,000 meals out of this. Imagine patient, I'll call her Sally. If you bought something you used every day for 19 years, you would be so happy if you were still using it 19 years later. Shoes or car and says, you know what? You made me feel better. She didn't, and that's, that's dentistry. Don't be negative. Share, oh, this lasted 12 years, that's 12,000 meals. But here's my golden nacho tip for you, Ben, and watching. This is what you should say when you finish any procedure. If we all do this, I believe we will make life better for our patients and ourselves. You finish a crown, right? You sit the patient up. You finish a filling, you sit the patient up. You put in an implant crown, you sit the patient up. You do a root canal, you sit the patient up. This is what you should say. Hey, Mrs. Smith, just so you know, the thing that we did today, crown, filling, the crown that we did today, it's normal if it lasts five to 12 years and then be done. If everyone says five to 12 years, we will create a much better dental world. Because then when someone comes in 15 years from now, I say, oh yeah, you've beaten the odds. Five to 12 years is a great time frame to share with patients expectations because us dentists, man, we take too much on ourselves. Patients have to take care of it. Patients, you know, ever heard someone say, were you eating anything hard? No, it was a Jolly Rancher. That's hard, that's a Jolly. So patients, Team members, dentists, five to 12 years sharing that is great managing of expectations. So I appreciate you sharing that. A couple more things here, Ben. Also our Job Connect team, I want you to share. Anyone who's looking for a job, my sister Jill runs that. She's awesome with our team. Job Connect at dentalnachos.com. We just connected someone for a job in Delaware, a job in Texas. We are running our version of the Nacho Online Dating Job Program. Reach out to Job Connect at dentalnachos.com. So I wanna end with two things, Ben. What you're looking to add, so we're running a Fundamentals of Implant Dentistry program, virtual program, for dentists to learn how to plan, place, restore, maintain, profit, do extraction bone grafts. It's a five-hour implant companion, four hours of live C. You get to keep it forever as a lifetime learning resource. Share with me why you're looking to do more implants as someone in private practice. How do you see that helping you? Well, first off, you got to look at what you refer out the most. Yeah. You got to just look at, and this is what I refer out the most. I'm, I, I do a lot of molar endo, a lot of surgical extractions, but implants is what we refer out the most. So you just got to look at your numbers and, and know that this is where you can grow. And, and the thing about dentists is we often cre create these dental, dental student hunger games, this competition, but implants are the one thing to bring us together like nachos. And here's why. There is plenty of implants to share. If you're a general dentist and you start doing some extraction bone grafts and some implants, you will wind re up referring more to your specialist because you become implant aware. So this is an opportunity. I mean, what I drives me not so nuts, Ben, you don't do every endo in your practice, right? Do you do I everything? Don't. No, but you do some. Do you if, a, you, if a child is attached to their mother's leg and needs 10, 10 fillings and refuses to sit in the chair, do you do that or usually you look to refer it? No, my favorite Peter oh. Don got it. You refer, and you said you did extractions, but do you do all, if there's a horizontally impacted number 32 next to the nerve, do you say, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling frisky, I'm gonna take it out, or do you refer those? I do refer those. So implants, do some, refer some, talk about them, restore more, refer them all. Just the process of learning how to place them will make you a better dentist with explaining it. And this is an area of dentistry that's in growth mode. Yesterday, I had eight patients. I talked about 10 implants to them, single teeth, full arch cases. So now's the time to learn that. We'll share the fundamentals of implant dentistry. It's a program designed to help dentists at any age or stage, but especially new dentists like you, Ben. Something where you can take this, you can make more money, help more patients, have more fun without the magic. Ben, I'm... This is the magic. Do you want to work more hours each week? Like when the day, do you feel like, oh, I don't work enough hours? I, I, I'm already doing six days a week right now, so I think I'm okay. 
So yeah, de dentisting hours are dog years out hours. It's full contact arts and crafts on people that don't want to be there. It's not easy. We have to embrace that. So make as much money as possible in a patient-centered way, not in a dentist-centered way, in a way that helps patients. And it's possible. When you put the patient first and you make that the, the source of your production, you will be ethical and honest. Patient-centered production is the way to go, but you may as well do more productive procedures. I mean, would you rather do a class two or an implant restoration, Ben? Uh, I, I, I love class twos. No, I'm oh, joking. Wow. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're excited. I mean, if it was the same money, right? If, it, if I said I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks for this next patient, class two, 14 DO, or take an implant impression on number 20, what would you pick? I would much rather take the implant impression. Yeah, because it's, it's an easier clinical procedure. No one's ever thanks you after a class two. Has anyone ever got up and say, thank you for your time and attention? They never do that. Right? They just say, are we done yet? Can I leave? So I right, think right. adding implants is important. Um, what's next for Ben? What are you doing next? So I am going to sign up for your course on awesome. implants because I think being able to talk to patients about it is just as important as being able to place it. I signed up for the implant pathway course. That'll be oh, nice. That's a great program. I'm very excited about and going to start looking for practice, hopefully within a year or two. And that you're you you're looking to purchase a practice. We have something coming up on Sunday night where I see I made a thirty thousand dollar mistake in buying my second practice. There was no dental nachos back then. There was no Facebook groups. I just listened to what the broker said. Ninety five percent my fault. I was unaware. I was at two thousand eleven. I just bought the practice for what the list price was. It was a dual representation broker. I want to share how I made that mistake. If I had known what I know now, I'd have thirty thousand dollars. I could have negotiated that down thirty thousand dollars. So when the you've done such a good job with always be connecting share with me ben you want to buy a practice how are you going to go about that like how are you going to find practice opportunities so i mean i i did the easy way too just 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 looking up brokers which which i'm not a huge fan of as of right now so the number two thing is i'm going to do the same thing i did to find a job i'm gonna i'm starting to talk to lab reps and kind of get my connections to maybe word of mouth because i think most most owners don't want to go through broker if, if they don't have to. So. What I'll share is the broker world is not so nuts and I'm a broker. With this one, Ben, finding a job is dating. Finding a practice is having a child. It's 30 times more important. So use brokers, use reps, every get attention and, and look at every opportunity. Always right. be one. It could be the shadiest of shadiest brokers. Still look at it. Get a team, get an attorney. Because what happens is the dentist signing up, we're going to be old one day and there's going to be some new thing called snapogram and our kids are going to do it and we're not going to know it. These seasoned age dentist sads don't know who they're signing up with as a broker, but they have great practices. It's not their issue because they don't have nachos or, or the Mark Costasnell success summit or Instagram. So they think, oh, this is a broker near me. So don't judge a practice by its That's broker. True. I did not think but of that. Be okay. very, very cautious when looking. And Leave no stern on unturned. Talk to your lab. Talk to your advisors. Get people to know you're looking for a practice in a, in a cool way. Like, oh, I would like to buy a practice over the next couple of years. Not, I need one tomorrow and you're desperate. Exactly. And the other thing I'll share, Ben, is your practices shouldn't be upset if you're looking to buy a practice. If my associates were looking for a practice, I would say, awesome. Just let me know when, you know, you buy a practice. We should be more supportive of each other as opposed to hiding it because this is where we're going for. Some people are going to be associates for a decade. Some people are going to be associates for two years. When you're on this journey, I worked for this company, Bloomberg. I don't know Michael Bloomberg when I was 16. He was an amazing guy who started um, the Bloomberg computer financial information, kind of like the first version of the internet. He would hire smart college grads, keep them for two to three years. If they moved on, no problem. Some would stay with him for a while. We should do the same thing with dentistry. And I want to encourage you on your practice journey to even up your connection. Read the tipping point for that because I have a close friend who can tag him here. His name's Todd Fleischman. One of the best dentists that I know, one of the best people that I know, one of the new dentist boost camp instructors. He's taken Spear, he's taken Coice. I mean, he's an awesome dentist, awesome person. The way he found his practice, he would tell you, was luck. But he made his luck because he signed up for a study club as a bad and paid money when everybody else was 10 years older than him. And he went to this study club, even though everyone was 10 years older than him and asked questions. And when it came time for someone in the study club to sell their practice, they sold it to him. And that's the type of stuff of making your own good timing. That's so important that they don't review in dental school, but so important for you. So um, well, thank you for putting all that 
Prince out there. Thanks no, to my, you. That, it's, my like, so I appreciate it. Listen to his, I, I'm glad, but listen to his episode of the Dental Amigos. We can link it here. Todd is just so awesome. 45 minutes. And, but I want you to share the most, Dentistry, blah, that's that's okay. Finding jobs. Tell me about getting married. You know, you're kind of married now. You're awesome wife, wife to be. What does she do and what are your plans uh, for getting married? So my wife is a pharmacist. Uh, she not she now works from home since COVID. So she she works for an uh, insurance company. Uh, we were gonna get married last Sunday and it got canceled because of COVID. Uh, sorry to hear that. I, what, told, what I told her, baby, it gives it gives you a year to find something better. So yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just you can bond together with love. Now, I love you know me. I like making fun jokes. I sure pharmacy comes with its own headaches, right? But if like right. you ever if you ever come home and say you're stressed, and your wife says why are you so stressed, be like you know when you go to put the pills together, the pill never yells at you. Not the right color. Don't lean <laughs> back. All this stuff, right? That's I mean we work full contact arts and crafts. What we do is crazy. Patients are awake. They're not asleep. And if you uh -huh. want some really, you, someone will use this over the next, um, uh, hopefully, maybe five hours. When patients are acting really crazy, like every day, and they're not cooperating, just say this, okay? Take a deep breath and say, hey, Mrs. Smith, if you could drop your mouth off like your car, it would be easier for both of us. And when you say that to them, it gets them like, oh, yeah, I am acting up, right? So when a patient say, oh, it would be easier, and they usually laugh, because, of course, who wouldn't want to just drop your head off and go shopping? And then come back and pick it up. Right, right, right. Us dentists, and we should we should understand. It's called what uh, dentisting intensity. That's the stress that we have. And I appreciate you sharing with our audience what it's like in the real world. Will you come back on in six months and give us an update, uh, Ben? I'd love to. I think, yeah, I'd love to. And how could people reach I out to you? People. Yeah. I'm just as nice in person as you are uh, on oh, the thanks. side. I met you in Scottsdale at the oh, yeah. Access Summit, and you and yeah, you're just as nice. So I appreciate thank you so much for everything you do. I appreciate it. I, I only have one speed. It's this is me. I'm this all the way all the time. Imagine how lucky you are to be someone to be married to me. But I, 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 uh, I Mark Costas, Dental Success Summit was awesome. I, he's a great friend. And him and I kind of grew up in this half social media, half no social media. I mean, I'm turning 43 tomorrow. You got what bads have to remember and tads and cads. You know, when, when a mad or a sad types on Facebook, we didn't grow up with this, right? We grew up talking face to face. So give everybody a little bit of extra kindness you know maybe something that comes off blunt from a 55 year old dentist they don't just know the nuances that's going to happen to us too text i mean ever text somebody like hey you want to do this blah 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 and they just text back k i'm like wow that wasn't really a bit but sometimes they're older and that's what they just saying right right okay so um how could people reach out to you i know you're telling great sir they say hey i want to hear about how you found jobs or what you're doing how can they reach yeah out to i'd love to help new grads so they can send me a facebook text uh, or they can text me directly on my phone number. It's 805-452-8584. I'm happy awesome. to help you grads. So generous of you. Uh, really appreciate you uh, embracing the Nacho Way, Ben. We're here to help you. Thanks for sharing with us on Spicy Toppings. Follow Ben. He's a great leader. And I, I hope, you know, when you get married, uh, if you could just have a nacho bar at the wedding, that would make me we'll feel do. good. We'll do. We'll do. Thanks so much, Ben. Well, have a great day. Thank you, Dr. Goodman.